Hello, this is Damir for the Droid Effect and today I'm going to show you how to overclock your Nexus 7 2013 using a custom kernel. But before that I will run a series of benchmarks on the stock kernel so we can compare the changes later with the overclocked kernel. After that I will show you a nice little bonus the kernel comes with. Now we will start with the benchmarks just to see. I will use both frequencies minimum and maximum at 1.5 GHz and performance so we can get the max out of it and the GPU max frequency of default 400. I will use those three benchmarks, Quadrant, Geekbench and Antutu and then I will play two games and we will check the frames per second, the average, just to see how it compares. Okay, let's start with Antutu, just to see no apps are running. Let's start it. Okay, we got 7106. Let's just do a screenshot for later and now continue with Antutu. Okay, we got a score of 24,357. Let's do a benchmark and a screenshot I guess as well. And continue with, wait, the screenshot is done. And continue with Geekbench. Okay, in the single score, in single core, we got 582 and multi score 1827. Let's screenshot. Okay, what I will now do is a Sun Spider test as well on Chrome. Okay, we finished at 1032. Okay, th those were the benchmarks with the stock kernel. Now we'll show you how to flash a custom kernel and overclock it up to 2 GHz. Okay, now I will show you how to flash a custom kernel and how to set it up. I'm pretty sure most of you know it, but for those who don't, I will show it. Go to the page, the link will be in the description below and check for this link NeoFlow version 13 stock hot plug this is the one I will be using just download the file put it in your download folder and then we we'll only have to go to the recovery I will fast forward this don't worry okay here we are in the recovery all you now have to do is go to install Check for NeoFlow version 14 MP deck. Swipe to confirm the flash and flash. Wait until and reboot. I will forward this also. Just so we have the same setup, let's check it. We will now have 2 GHz maximum. Also set the minimum to 2 GHz. Also performance. Set the lock on, so we will stay at that. Another thing that is overclocked is the GPU frequency to 487. The developer told me 490 MHz would be the bottleneck anyways, so it doesn't make much sense to get any higher. 2 GHz though is, some devices get higher, but this is the latest safe frequency every Nexus 7 should be possible to get. Okay, and now we will do the benchmarks again with the overclocked kernel at 2 GHz. Okay, we got a score of 8641. Let's screenshot this again. And continue with Antutu like the last time. We had 24,000. Let's check what we've we'll got this time. Okay, we are finished and got a score of 29,139. Wait for a screenshot and continue with Geekbench.
Okay, looks like Geekbench doesn't want to run on 2 GHz anymore. I don't know really sure why, but because all the games I tried and played over an hour had no trouble. So maybe it's just a stability issue of this app alone. Okay, I've done all the benchmarks, stock and overclocked. I will display them right here for you to see for a couple of seconds. If it's not long enough, just pause the video. See what you think of it. I really don't want to judge about performance because for me the general daily use performance is important and there I don't just need to overclock. I don't play much games and I have to say in asphalt the few little more frames really are worth the overclocking I have to say but not on Riptide because it has way than more enough frames and in general daily use we won't ma it doesn't matter because of the frames. Also battery even if overclocked didn't suffer that much that I thought and so it's really not that bad if you use the 2, meg 2 gigahertz. Okay, after all the benchmarks, games and comparison, let's get back to the bonus I mentioned at the beginning of the video called Screenway Control. It gives you two possibilities to turn on your device without the power button. The first would be Sweep to Wake and the second one Double Tap to Wake. Sweep to Wake also works as Sweep to Sleep if you do it in a different direction. If you go from the right to the left on the bottom of your screen, it turns the device off. If you do it from the left to the right, it turns it on. If you turn off your device and do the double tap, it turns your device on as well. So this is the bonus I mentioned. I think it's a pretty convenient thing, especially the double tap to wake. Let me know if you like it. And anything else, if you liked my video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, reshare the video, give me a comment or anything like that. Okay, see ya, bye.